Hey, welcome guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about and explaining Wi-Fi 802.11 A, B, G, N, and A, C. Um, another way people might pronounce it is 802.11, but primarily it's pronounced 802.11. And then of course you have the letters uh, afterwards. So as of right now, uh, AC is primarily the most popular technology. Uh, a lot of people might not realize it, but they're actually still using N technology very, very often, even though they might think they're using AC. So uh, stick around and explain more about that. Now, if you want to learn more about the new technology that's going to come popular in 2019, which is AX, uh, there's another video for that. Um, put a link to that in the video description. So it had theoretical speeds of 54 megabits per second. And remember, that's not how fast we actually see uh, on a Windows file share copying. That actually converts into 6.75 megabytes per second. Throughout this video, I'll be mentioning theoretical speeds, which again is theoretical based on the industry standard and what manufacturers are deploying and selling. It doesn't mean you actually get even close to the speeds I'm listing here. Um, in real life, you get much slower speeds. And that comes down to numerous factors, how many walls are in between your device and your wireless access point, which I'll just be referring to as AP or access point for the rest of this video. Uh, depends on how many other devices are on the same network, causing interference, trying to connect to the same access point, stuff like that. And then the thing about A technology was that it wasn't that popular. The reason being is because it ran on the five gigahertz frequency, which means more speed, but poor range. In fact, indoors, you would average about 25 feet of range, which is really, really poor. So that, that's why the technology never really took off. I mean, it was available for the market, but it didn't do so well. To get better range means investing in better antennas, very expensive technology. So you wouldn't see this too often back in the day in home use, more in business use because they could afford the technology. So switching gears over to B, this technology took off with people. This one was very, very popular. And it was for two reasons. One is that the price wasn't too big. People could actually afford it easily. The other thing was the range. It was advertised as reaching 100 feet indoors. Although again, you wouldn't achieve this speed for real because in your house you would have walls usually between that distance. This meant sacrificing one thing though, speed. Only 11 megabits per second, which is incredibly slow. This is the sacrifice you have to make because it ran at the 2.4 gigahertz signal. So 2.4 frequency runs at a wider range than 5 gigahertz signal, but you're sacrificing speed. And that applies to all the Wi-Fi technology I'll be talking about in this video. But again, because it was affordable, people love the range. This took off. This was very, very popular, way more popular than the A technology was. But one thing that kind of clashed with the signal and sometimes made the speed even slower than this theoretical speed was that because it runs the 2.4 gigahertz signal, you had other non-registered devices like baby monitors, for example, uh, cordless house phones back in the day would run on the 2.4 gigahertz signal and cause interference. Now shifting over to G, in my opinion, this is when Wi-Fi got good enough to use uh, that you actually should invest into it if you didn't have a wireless access point back in the day. The reason being is because it had the speed of A at 54 megabits per second, but it had the range of B running on 2.4 gigahertz signal. You, it was theoretically possible to reach 100 feet of range indoors, but again, you most likely have walls and interference from other devices. G was the best of A and B combined. The other thing about G is that because it all ran on 2.4 gigahertz signal, it's backwards compatible with B. So for example, if you had B devices at home, but your access point was G, you could connect it with your B devices because they run on the same frequency. The only thing to keep in mind is that you would not get the G speed on B devices because B devices couldn't reach the speed. They would cap at 11 megabits per second. And the same thing in reverse. So if you had a B access point with G devices, the speed would cap at the B access point. And this kind of follows through for all future devices that are backwards compatible. So for example, the next one is N, and N is backwards compatible with B and G, but the speeds will cap at your G and B devices. So I always say G is where Wi-Fi was worth investing into, but N, in my opinion, is when it was really good. The speed jump from the previous technology was just huge. N ranges in between three to 600 megabits per second. The reason being is because there's so much research involved with getting N up and ready. 
Uh, we had a lot of smartphones being connected through Wi-Fi now. Um, this is where, you know, wireless technology was just really just booming at the time. So this had to make a big difference in the technology available. The other thing is that we have HD videos content being uh, transferred around large files and databases. Well, this was able to keep up with the standards. The other thing it introduced was multiple input, multiple output MIMOs. That's pretty much what this stands for. You might see that very often. What this means is that it allows for a lot more connectivity to a single access point. More devices and people could connect to an N access point or router than previously allowed before. You have more signal conflict before, not as much with N technology. The other interesting thing about N is that it ran on, and well, still does actually, on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequency. You have the option of running either or, it depends on you. And of course, that's why we have such a huge speed range. If you're running on 2.4 gigahertz frequency, you get the lower bracket of 300. If you're running on 5 gigahertz frequency, means better speed, you can run at the higher bracket at 600 megabits per second. But of course, 2.4 has lower speed, but further range at an estimated 150 feet indoors, again, depending on how many walls and other devices are connecting. But 5 gigahertz had less range, but more speed. So N was the best of both worlds and allows people to connect to a wireless router and set it up and choose which device do they want to connect to on 2.4 or 5 gigahertz frequencies. Okay, and now we're gonna finally jump over to AC. AC is extremely popular now. Uh, it has been popular for the last five years. It's just been easily available and affordable. And it's pretty much the standard right now as of this video upload date. For starters, the speed made another huge jump ranging from 400 megabits to one gigabit per second. Again, this is all theoretical speed, but on paper, that's a huge, huge jump. The other thing is that that multiple input output, it still supports it on AC, whereas uh, N had four streams and antennas. You might not see that on all devices, but it could support up to eight, which means more devices and more people connecting to an AC router with less signal conflict, which means better data transfer. The other thing is that it runs on five gigahertz frequency only. AC does not run on 2.4. And this is a really misleading thing manufacturers do because when you buy an AC router, it will tell you that it runs on five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz frequency. They're not really lying, but they're not telling you the whole truth because AC only runs on five gigahertz frequency. The way you're able to get 2.4 gigahertz frequency to choose in your wireless router settings is because this is actually running on N technology. So a lot of the wireless access points you can buy have N technology built into it to run on 2.4 gigahertz and AC runs on five. That's how it's accomplished. The other thing it does is beam forming. So previously, uh, other wireless technologies kind of spread the signal in every direction around in like 360 degrees, just trying to send signal to the connected devices. Beam forming tries to do a better job and have better signal strength by looking and the device is connecting to and only send the signal in that direction, the direction of your device. So it allowed for better signal and connectivity. One thing to keep in mind is that AC, because it runs on five gigahertz signal, is not backwards compatible with G and uh, B devices because they run on 2.4 gigahertz frequency. The way you're able to connect back to them on a AC router is because it's using N technology, don't forget that. So the thing about five gigahertz frequency and real world experience for me uh, I'm running the Asus RTAC68U wireless router. Uh, link to that review is in the video description. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, when I'm connected to a 5 gigahertz signal on this router, AC signal, I'm only getting about 50 feet. So I just reached like the beginning of my driveway, right to near the front door or the front of my house. When I run on 2.4 gigahertz frequency, I can reach the end of my property. So right where the street begins and my driveway ends. So the signal is way better on this. So that's it for this video. If you want to learn about the new technology 802.11ax, a uh, video link to that will be in the video description, as well as the new naming convention standard of all of this mumbo jumbo being simplified. In fact, uh, Samsung announced it with the Galaxy S10 that they are now changing it. They've adopted it already. So it's something you really should learn about the new naming convention. Again, another link to that video is in the video description. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.